From the KBVR TV studio on the campus of Oregon State University, this is the Beaver Sports Show. Good evening, Beaver Nation, and welcome to another episode of the Beaver Sports Show. The Beaver baseball team was in action this past weekend as they took on the Cow Bears as they came to Goss Stadium to take on the number three Beavers. And the softball team took on the California Golden Bears as they looked to end their season on a high note. Alongside me, as always, is Boone Kruger, and I'm Rick Stella. The Beaver baseball team sat ranked third in the country heading into the weekend series against Cal. Coming off of a tough home loss to Oregon last Tuesday, the Beavers hope to bounce back by notching their sixth conference series win of the year. Sports Show reporter David Murphy has the highlight from Game 1 on Saturday. The third-ranked Oregon State Beavers welcome number 21 California to the confines of Goss Stadium for a three-game weekend series. Game 1 called for staff ace Sam Gavilio to take the mound. Gavilio struggled in his previous start, scattering four earned runs along with a career-high seven walks and no strikeouts. California's Eric Johnson, however, pitched eight quality innings against Oregon in his last start, allowing one earned run and striking out 11. The game was scoreless going into the bottom of the second when Oregon State showcased their ability to play small ball. After Kevin Keyes and Jared Norris reached base on a walk, Carter Bell was able to lay down a sacrifice bunt to move Keyes over to third base. Parker Burberry then hit a sacrifice fly to center to score keys and put the Beavers up 1-0. From there, both starting pitchers were magnificent as Sam Gavilio showcased his arm tossing 6 and one third innings with 10 strikeouts and just one walk. Despite giving up the run in the second inning, Eric Johnson was still throwing a no-hitter going into the seventh, thanks in part to Cal second baseman Tony Renda's defensive play. To begin the bottom of the seventh, Carter Bell singled up the middle to break up Johnson's no-hit bid. After a walk by Tyler Smith, Brian Stamps entered as a pinch hitter and in his only at-bat of the game, doubled to the left field wall, scoring two runs and putting the Beavers up 3 to nothing. OSU closer Tony Bryant came out in the ninth inning to shut the door and record his eighth save of the season as Oregon State took game one Saturday afternoon 3 to nothing. Thanks to some outstanding pitching by Sam Gavilio and some timely hitting by Brian Stamps, Oregon State takes Game 1 3 to nothing. For the Beavers Sports Show, this is David Murphy. After the Beavers win in Game 1 of the doubleheader on Saturday, they went into the second game with OSU pitcher Josh Osich taking his 6-1 and one record to the mound for the Beavers. Sports Show reporter Kyla Reynolds has a story from Game 2 on Saturday. After the Beavers got a 3-0 win in Game 1 on Saturday afternoon, they took to the field for Game 2 against the Golden Bears, looking to get their straight six series win in conference play. Even with strong games from Carter Bell and Kevin Kyes, OSU fell 6-2 to the number 21 Golden Bears. Oregon State pitcher Josh Osich pitched six innings allowing six hits and four runs against the dangerous offense of Cal. With the split on Saturday, the Beavers' record stands at 33-11 and 13-4 and and in conference play, which gives OSU a half-game lead over Arizona State for the league title. Thanks, Kyla. Boone, you had a chance to see the Beavers this past weekend against Cal. Um, the funny thing about Cal is that they're a baseball team that's almost like fighting for their life. Um, I know that they just recently were able to raise enough money to keep their baseball program around. Did they seem like a team that was fighting for pride against Oregon State this weekend? You know, they're just a solid baseball team. I don't know if they're fighting for pride. They're in the thick of the Pac-10 race. They still, there's a lot of baseball left. So going into the series against the Beavers, California definitely wanted a shot at the number three team in the country. And they gave the Beavers almost everything they could have. In the first game on Saturday, OSU only had two hits and somehow won three to nothing. And then California was able to get that second game. So going into game three, it was really anybody's ball game. And OSU was able to come out on top to get their sixth straight Pac-10 series win. But 
you know, California, I don't, you know, they're fighting for pride, sure, but they're really fighting for the playoffs. They're, they've got the baseball team now, and uh, they're not necessarily off to that hot start that they had at the beginning of the year, but they're a solid baseball team. They're a scary offensive team, and they've got really good pitching, too, so a great series win all to get together for OSU. Let's talk about game one um, on Saturday with Sam Gavilio took the mound. Um, incredible outing by him. 6.1 innings, 10 strikeouts, 5 hits, no runs. I mean, this is just vintage Sam that we've been, you know, waiting to see every game here at home. Um, how big is he in the second half of the Pac-10 season as Beavers gear up for what could potentially be a postseason run? Well, Sam had kind of cooled off since his hot start where he had all those innings without allowing to run over 40 and he really kind of redeemed himself against California. He'd kind of been roughed up to early in the Pac-10 season, and to come out and have 10 strikeouts really just kind of dominate the game. Five hits, you know, he got hit on a couple times, but, uh, you know, overall just a great job. And six and a third innings, you know, he's going to be huge down the stretch. Only two more Pac or three more Pac-10 series left, so, you know, it's a big opportunity for him to end the season on a high note. But really what you have to love is, you know, moving to Sunday's game, Ben Wetzler picking up that win and getting more confidence because that's a guy that OSU really is going to need at the end of the year. And come playoff time, they're going to need someone other than Sam Gavilio and Josh Osich to carry the team. Exactly. I was going to say, you know, Ben Wetzler, the last time we saw him was against Arizona State when he got pulled quickly in that first inning, at least on, in a starting position. Well, at Goss Stadium. At Goss Stadium, yeah. So it's, it's big for him to get into that game on Sunday. And, you know, he locked seven innings, seven strikeouts, only gave up four hits and one run. You know, he's a guy as a freshman, you know, that seems to have all the confidence in the world. And that's going to be great, you know, come even this later on in the, the last few series in the Pac-10, not to mention some of the postseason play for the Beavers. With such a deep rotation that they seem to have, you know, Schultz could take the mound, you know, Nygren could take the mound. Do we see that, is, is this the one, two, three we're going to see, or, or is that third starter going to change week in and week out? Um, I think Ben Wessler has played himself back into that Sunday starter role. He really, he's been the guy all year. Yeah, he had a rough outing against Arizona State and wasn't that sharp, but, uh, you know, he's the guy. He's proven it. The w game he had, seven complete innings, seven strikeouts. You really can't beat that against a solid top 25 California baseball team you know the pitching it looks like that we're just gonna we're gonna be just fine you know the rest of the year come pl and come playoff time talking about offense Brian Stamps has just come alive the last six games he's on a six game hitting streak he's seven for his last 15 he had three runs in uh in the Saturday or no excuse me in the He's, or he had three runs in the entire series, so mm -hmm. he's really coming off and he's doing well. And that's the kind of player you need. He's played in over 40 games. He started 21 for OSU, and so he's playing in all the games. And he just provides that spark later in the game when he comes off the bench. And he makes a difference in the outfield. Too. And we were talking about that earlier, that you know it's, it's great to see a guy like Stamps come through. He, um, right now, he got benched for a little bit, it kind of there in the middle of the season, but to see his bat come alive the way it is right now, it's certainly great for a guy who can hit leadoff for us. And you know one thing that has not seemed to slow down at all is our offense. A little bit of a hiccup last week against Oregon, um, a great game last night against Portland. Can they keep the bats hot down the stretch? Yeah, you know, I think they can. Andrew Susak's coming back. Jake Rodriguez has already come back. Uh, you know, this is only going to bolster the offense. And, yeah, they had a, you know, kind of hiccup against Oregon. And they only managed two hits in game one on Saturday. But, you know, that's baseball. You're going to have some bad games. You're not going to always get 10 hits and 10 runs every single game. You're going up against Pac-10 pitching. It's going to be good pitching. And, yeah, they struggled offensively against Oregon. But that's the strength of Oregon's team is their pitching. They're not a hitting team, so you know, I'm not worried about our hitting. I think they'll be just fine. They're in one of the toughest conferences in the country. They're going to have an advantage, at least in the regionals, whoever mm -hmm. they're going up against, especially if they keep playing this way. They're going to be a national seed. They'll be at home at Goss Stadium, friendly confines. They know this Paul Park better than any team, obviously, so you know, they're going to be just fine. They moved up to number two in the rankings this past week after South Carolina lost a series. Does the bullseye get bigger on Oregon State's back? I mean, I know people are gunning for them. I mean, we're going to get everybody's you know, greatest game in the Pac-10. Or do they yeah, take it, it in stride? I don't think it, it doesn't change anything. This week they're going up against Washington. Then they have USC and then Oregon. Though, those three teams themselves, you know, they know how big Oregon State is. There's no big bullseye. It doesn't get any bigger just by moving up one spot.
How do you see them faring against UW this weekend? I saw that their last series win for UW was against Oregon at the beginning of April. Uh, is this is a UW a team that is just reeling right now, and Oregon State can take advantage of this? <laughs> Oregon State better get the sweep. Uh, UW, they're 13 and 30 overall. They're in last place in the Pac-10 at 4 and 14. The exciting thing about this series is that it gives the chance for Oregon State to play in Safeco Field, the home of the Seattle Mariners, on Friday at 6 p.m. That first game, there'll be a lot of excitement for both teams. I, uh, I went to one of those games a couple years ago, and it's just a great place to watch a baseball game and to see a college teams playing in that ballpark, especially Oregon State. You know, it's really exciting. Hopefully, you know, the lights don't get too big for them. You know, it will be kind of an empty stadium, but there'll still be a good crowd, 10, 15,000 people. So, uh, you know, the Safeco holds 40-some thousand. So, hopefully they take care of business this weekend and get a sweep. You know, it's, hard, it's so hard to count on a sweep, but when you're playing the last place team in the Pac-10, who's a team who's just really, and you mentioned their last series win was against Oregon. I believe that was their second Pac-10 series they had played that this year, and that was in the beginning of April. So they have gone almost an entire month without getting a series win. We're going to take a quick break here at the Beaver Sports Show. When we come back, we're going to look and see how the softball team fared against the Cal Bears. Stay tuned. wrestling team got back to their winning way. So what's next for Calvin Hands? Well, we show the world watching the Beaver Sports Show on KBVR. The women's softball team has had a rough time during the Pac-10 this year, riding an 11-game losing streak entering this past weekend series against the number 7 Cal Bears. With such stiff competition in the Pac-10, it's no surprise the women have been slumping as of late. Sports Show reporter Kaylee Sunberg joins us now with a weekend recap in this sports news update. This weekend, the Oregon State softball team played the number seven University of California Bears in Corvallis. It was Strikeout Cancer Weekend, sponsored by the Corvallis Clinic. The Bears kept the series opener tied up until the third inning. Then the Bears broke out, scoring three runs. Tina Andriana was relieved by Paige Hall, who gave up a two-run home run on her first pitch. The rest of the game, the Bears kept tacking on runs. The final was 9-0. Bears starting pitcher Jolene Henderson pitched a complete shutout and allowed four hits. Pitching and defense was the name of the game in the second game. California scored the game's only run in the top of the second inning on a bases loaded fielder's choice and one out. The Beavers threatened the whole game but could not get a timely hit. The Beavers lost 1-0. Tina Andriana held the Bears to seven scoreless innings in the final game of the series. The game was pushed into extra innings. Jamia Reed reached on an error by the second baseman. She then moved to second on a sacrifice bunt before stealing third with, the, with one out in the inning. A single scored read from third from the, for the game winning run. California added three more runs in the inning to take a 4-0 lead through seven and a half innings. Oregon State had a chance to redeem themselves. With the runner on second with one out in the bottom of the eighth, they could not push any runs across and fell by the score of 4-0. Thanks, Kaylee. The Oregon State men's rowing team wrapped up their regular season this past weekend as they competed in the Windermere Cup in Seattle, Washington. The 17th-ranked Beavers took on Washington, Sacramento State, Seattle Pacific, Stanford, and Victoria. With more on this past weekend's result for the men's rowing team, here is Sports Show reporter Derek Sproul. Thanks, guys. The 17th-ranked Oregon State men's rowing team traveled up to Seattle this past weekend to wrap up their regular season schedule competing in the 25th annual Windermere Cup. This was one of the biggest regattas that the rowing team competed in this season, racing on a 2,000-meter course that begins on Lake Washington and finishes at the west end of Montlake Cut. The Varsity 4 Plus took the water first, rowing against three crews from the University of Washington, along with crews from Seattle Pacific and Sacramento State. The Beavers finished in fifth place with a time of 6 minutes and 58.8 seconds, only two seconds behind fourth place finishers Sacramento State. Next to race were both freshman eight teams racing against two Washington crews. The freshman team, teams finished in third and fourth with times of 6 minutes 22.9 seconds and 6 minutes 38.6 seconds respectively. The junior varsity eight was the last row, competing against Washington, Stanford, and University of Victoria for the Erickson Cascade Cup. They finished in fourth place with a time of 6 minutes 22.1 seconds, just 3.5 seconds behind the University of Victoria. Oregon State races at the Pac-10 Championships next Sunday, May 15th, on Lake Natoma at Rancho Cordova, California. Back to you guys. 
Well, that's all the time we have for you tonight on the Beaver Sports Show. On behalf of Boone Kruger and everybody else here at the Beaver Sports Show, I'm Rick Stella. Have a good night, and we'll see you back here next week.